Uh, the car's just being taken to Lumpkins. Sorry. When you towed away vehicle, you're going there. Okay, so what does that mean? Seriously, Augie, I'm trying to help you, bud. In the heart of Miami Beach, a police sergeant found himself in a situation that would forever tarnish his badge. He was caught red-handed, sipping on alcohol while on duty, and to make matters worse, he was wearing his official uniform. The incident had unfolded under the cover of night, the darkness only highlighting the reckless actions of an officer sworn to uphold the law. Today's narrative focused on unveiling the stories of those officers who had shown utter irresponsibility and the inevitable consequences that followed their selfish mistakes. Among them, a name emerged, Justin Augustine from the Pequo Police Department. Rumor had it that he had committed a grievous error involving his own police cruiser. The scene shifted to a garage where decisions were to be made, and accountability had to be faced. In the dimly lit garage, a group had gathered, anxious and resolute. Their task was clear, disarm him, confront him, and try to reason with him. Uh, has to go down there, one of them said, attempting to defuse the situation. The sergeant in question, named Augie, appeared to be disoriented, perhaps divided between his duties and the clouded thoughts that alcohol can bring. The dialogue continued, the officers referring to the incident involving the cruiser, which seemed to be damaged. All assessment, everybody that wrecks a cruiser that totals it uh, has to go down there. So what we do is just take your taser off of you. And uh, you have any backup weapons on your anything? Uh, drop your vest or your uh, duty belt because you don't need that. We're going to go down to a drug and alcohol test. The words exchanged painted a picture of a situation gone awry, a vehicle totaled, a need for a drug and alcohol assessment, and a journey to a hospital. Augie, still wearing his uniform, was instructed to shed his gear, a symbolic act of relinquishing his responsibilities, at least temporarily. Among the items removed was a pocket knife, a mundane object now laden with meaning. The atmosphere remained tense as Augie's condition came into question. He seemed adrift, unable to fully comprehend the gravity of his actions. I'm done. He uttered, a resignation in his voice that hinted at a deeper turmoil within him. As the officers pressed him for answers, his responses were a mix of evasion and admission. Are you under the influence of They inquired, hoping for a glimmer of honesty. No, good. I hope not. I, I do. The uncertainty of the situation hung heavily in the air. Augie's focus divided between his inner turmoil and the officers before him. A decision had to be made, whether he would be taken for a drug and alcohol test, whether he would cooperate or resist. The scene transitioned from the garage to the officer's internal struggle. He refused, a statement that spoke volumes, revealing his reluctance to face the truth. Are you going with me? The officers implored. Augie's response was hesitant, a mix of defiance and desperation. He refused the ride insisting on an alternative solution. The officers suggested calling someone to pick him up to ensure his safety and the safety of others on the road. So we had the erratic driver call on you. Let's drive half a mile. Let's this is me. what's gonna happen. We're gonna you. It was a spring evening on April 27th, 2018 in New Jersey, when the Lower Township Police Communications received a call that would set a series of events into motion. The clock read 6.28 p.m. as a concerned citizen reported an alarming sight a black Chevrolet truck behaving erratically on Breakwater Road, heading towards Route 9. The caller's description painted a picture of danger, detailing a vehicle moving at an unsafe speed, disregarding traffic signals, and narrowly avoiding collisions. Amidst this backdrop, the focus shifted to a pair of officers on the scene, tasked with handling the situation that had been reported. Uncertainty was palpable in the air, as they approached the truck and its driver, the conversation that followed was an attempt to make sense of the unfolding scenario. The driver, identified as the subject of the erratic driving report, was confronted by the officers. ALT. So we had the erratic driver call on you. The driver's response was an acknowledgement of having been under observation. The officers conveyed a sense of responsibility, acknowledging that they needed to address the situation in accordance with protocol. It was mentioned that their superior lieutenant was already informed. I understand, but everything's recorded now, sir. You know that we got to handle it how we have to handle it. Yeah. It's, is it urgent? These two officers seem quite unsure of what to do with the situation at hand, but are doing really well to remain in control. We're starting to drive by LT. Let's get you out of here, okay? Can, we, can, you, can you come with us? Yeah. Okay. Let's go in the back of Mike's car. We'll get you out of here. Yeah. Make you sure you what? what? What's up? I can't let you get in the car. You know that. Well, then you drive it. 
Well, if you have someone on team, we can get it. I see Mr. Eccles here. We can Yo. try to get him to drive my truck home, please. Your keys are in it. We'll we'll handle that. LT, we'll handle that. All right, do the front and search up on that. Don't put him in the back. I'm saying you cuff him in the front. Hey, Rob. I do, man. Not much any of us can do, unfortunately. We can't do that, Mike. Yeah, just, just do me a favor and hang tight, all right? LT, you know you can't do that, sir. We can't have you in the front seat. I can't have you in the front seat. We're not going to cuff you in the back, okay? We're, we're going to do it in the front, all right? Are you serious? Yeah, sir, you understand this. You would hate to be in our position too. John, John. please, please, John. Please, John. I don't, John. We, please, we'll get you the help you need. Let's just, come on. You know we don't want to do this to you. All right, but well, we gotta get you. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta get this process up. People are starting to come. We're all gonna get. You know what? You know what? Other people John, responding out here. You, Sir, I would like just, you. Just this is me. what's gonna happen. We're gonna get you behind this door so no one sees. Mike's gonna put the cuffs on you in. The back. No, Wait. no, Wait. there's no cuffs. Amidst the seriousness of the situation, the reality of being recorded was brought into focus. The officers acknowledge the need to follow proper procedures despite the recording, as the safety of all involved was paramount. As they deliberated on how to proceed, the question of urgency arose. A brief discussion ensued, hinting at the complexities of the moment. It became apparent that the driver needed to step out of the truck, a step that would be taken under the watchful eye of the officers. The officers displayed a sense of commitment to their duty, striving to ensure safety on the road. The driver's cooperation was sought, and the field sobriety test was initiated. Clear instructions were given, with the officers carefully watching the driver's response. The narrative transitioned, revealing moments of tension and the challenges faced by the officers. The officers were determined to handle the situation while preserving their professionalism. In the midst of it all, a plea resonated, a call for understanding and cooperation. It was evident that the officers grappled with the weight of their decisions, torn between their duty and the compassion they felt. I am not You okay? Yeah, I will pay for her. No, I'm fine. Okay. I, I... Number three, Sergeant Michael Roadside found himself in a rather unfortunate predicament while on duty. He had been working a construction detail and ended up rear-ending another car at a rest stop in Monmouth County. His initial words captured the state he was in, a mixture of confusion and explanation. Okay. Yeah. Right. I had a prostate surgery. Okay. I'm going to anesthesia right now. I'm okay. trying to get home to send a message. Okay. I will pay for her, you know, whatever yeah. I have to do. Okay. Despite his attempt to explain, it was evident that something was amiss. The situation seemed to revolve around his desire to reach home and ensure the well-being of someone he cared about. The background music played as a backdrop to the bewildering encounter. Sergeant Roadside's attempts to reassure those around him fell somewhat flat, as his state of mind appeared scattered and unclear. He mentioned handling something related to a car, mentioning the prospect of payment, and asserting his responsibility. Concerned officers interacted with him, trying to gauge the situation. There was a reference to paperwork from the hospital, indicating a recent medical procedure he might have undergone. He expressed his intention to return home, stating he lived nearby in cinemas. These words provided a glimpse into his mental state at that moment. As officers handled the situation, the camera captured his actions and their attempts to manage the circumstances. His demeanor seemed to be a mixture of urgency, confusion, and an underlying desire to make amends for what had transpired. Thanks for watching.